welcome to the Athletic NBA Show podcast here on the Athletic Podcast Network, Basket Buds Edition. I'm your host, Zach Harper. We got Jake King. We got Josh Hustis. We got Dave DeFore producing, and we got a show for you. Want to remind you, you can watch us on YouTube. That's not weird. It's not weird to watch people on the internet. You do it. You watch us on YouTube. We'll talk. We'll, <laughs> we'll chat. We don't. Who knows what we'll do? But we'll, we'll be chat, on YouTube, sure. and you can and you can. <laughs> Watch us do that. Put <laughs> a NBA show podcast on YouTube. Just search that. Uh, also, subscribe to the Bounce free email newsletter, the athletic.com slash the bounce. And make sure you subscribe to the athletic. It's the best coverage of sports on the internet. Hey, guys. What a week in sports it's been. Huh? We got all kinds of stuff. We got scoring to talk about. Doc Rivers is the new Bucks head coach, the Wizards. You know, have a new head coach situation. Um, I'm sorry to everybody who wanted this cute little Cinderella story of, oh, maybe the De- Detroit Lions can make the Super Bowl. No, not against the 49ers. <laughs> sorry. They, I saw some said they sacrificed a trip to the Super Bowl I, to win one NBA regular season game. Dan Campbell, yeah. I love Dan Campbell, though. Sure. Guy's going to take a lot of heat. <laughs> Yeah, as he should. Uh, he screwed up the game. Yeah, that's exactly he what screwed up the game, but salvaged the franchise. For now, if they're who knows, it's the Lions. We don't even know if they'll be good next year. But they haven't been good ever. No, I mean, I think they had twelve wins. The with bar Matt is super, once, right? Once, right? Well, the bar right. is super low. Well, they did it with Dan Campbell once now, and then we can wait another forty years for that to happen. But guys, this isn't the football show. All right. Just letting you know that the 49ers won. And I told everybody the 49ers won. I said, I'm not worried about it. Okay? And that's what happened. Just like, I'm not worried about what you guys have to say in the hot take safe zone. That's right. We're opening up the hot take safe zone. So for all the listeners and viewers out there, some of you got a little upset last time. Said, how can you say it? Guys, it's a hot take safe zone. You can't attack us. Mm-mm. Hence the safe it's zone. Off limits. Yeah, it's off limits. Like, whatever we say here is off limits. So, <laughs> we each have a hot take. It's illegal for you to attack us. <clears throat> we, we'll we sue. <laughs> okay? Bucks fans mad said uh, that Damian Lillard's going to leave. I'll sue you. Okay? You can't <laughs> get mad at us in the hot take safe zone. It's law. As of January 1st this year, it's law. Like, went into effect. Okay? Mm-hmm. Don't blame me. Books. Blame the politicians, all right? Write your Congress people. Um, but guys, the hot take safe zone, we open up the hot take safe zone. We each get a hot take to say, you cannot d- disagree with it. You cannot deny it. You can ask questions for clarification. They can't be loaded questions, Jay. Okay? Uh, why not? You you have angry questions, angry loaded questions. I don't have angry questions. I just have questions. I just need clarification. Uh, when you thought of this stupid take... Like, that's a type of question you would ask. Right, okay. yeah. It's a loaded question. You can't yeah. do that. You can't do that. I will, You're injecting uh, your opinion. Sure I ask pleasant questions. Instead of being curious as a cat. That's why your friends call you whiskers. All right? So who wants to go first with the hot take safe <laughs> Does Jay even get that? Do you even get that reference? No, I don't get that fucking Oh, reference. man. The Harry Carey show on uh, Saturday Night Live. Will Ferrell is Harry Carey. So he's curious as a cat. That's why his friends call him whiskers cool <laughs> yep it, it was cool all right Sounds josh go first. You're in the this is totally zone. this is totally i just want to see it happen i have no evidence to back it i have no nothing the I pistons like will not going. will not the pistons will not finish last in the nba whoa they will whoa. not finish last in the nba okay all right it will so fall who... to either the wizards or the spurs most likely the wizards maybe the hornets wow. or the hornets but the Pistons will not have the worst record in the NBA. So a couple of Hornets fans on Twitter got mad at me after the first week of power rankings because I had the Hornets as the worst team in basketball. Mm-hmm. Um, and at least net rating wise, they're the least competitive team in basketball, even though they've got more wins than than the Pistons. But I, I mean, I don't hate this. You know, they beat the Thunder. I mean, what happened to your boy Chet Holmgren? Can't beat the Pistons. Jalen Duras <laughs> is gonna. Just gonna smoke him all night? Come on! It's what's it's, ha- I mean, what happened? So right, it was the second night of a back to back. But reg- they're gonna fall. They're gonna no. I'm saying they're gonna fall into a couple wins like that. I think the Pistons. And I th- the Pistons will fall into a few wins where they just 
so not it's so not you not only crazy. have them not finishing last that i mean you obviously don't think they're going to have the worst record in NBA history no. because everyone else has at least 10 wins i think is that the is it 10 wins is the nine is nine is the nine is, is the, the lowest yeah nine and 73 was like the 72 73 sixers i think oh um what did the bobcats, bobcats finish? well they well yeah. they were seven and 59 so it's oh, the lowest man. win percentage in nba Whoa. history <laughs> Yeah, that's a tough season. That's a tough, yeah, that's a tough <laughs> that's season a tough right season. there. <laughs> the uh I feel like a lot of this depends on what happens at the trade deadline. The yeah, Hornets, for them or for the Horn- other- for everybody. The Hornets okay. have already started getting rid of pieces. They got rid of Rosier. Yep. The but what do they do? What do the Pistons do with Bogdanovich? Is he still around? Yeah. Because that, that's a huge factor to me. They so- don't have a ton of solid pieces. I would say, <laughs> and, so, and losing right, a couple could go a long way. Well, right now the Wizards are only two and a half games ahead of mm-hmm. the Pistons. They have eight, they have eight wins. Everyone else has at least ten. But the Wizards could trade some guys 40. too. The Wizards should trade. I mean, they should free Kuz. They should free Tyus Jones. I wouldn't mind them freeing Daniel Gafford. I don't. Um, yeah. I don't know that any of this stuff's going to happen. But I feel bad for those guys. On the t- it should just as be we're talking Jordan about Poole. This- I am going to not only agree with this hot take, I'm going well, to add to it. The Wizards, the Wizards will finish last. So okay. this, is, this yeah. is a bonus hot take for me. I like it. You, you, how many wins do you think they finish with? Not many. D- not Detroit? many. Well, well, I guess both teams. Do they get over teams. 10? Do they, do they get past 10? Past 10. Yeah, yeah they both get past yeah. 10. Okay. 12? 12 is pretty bad. But do they yeah. get, do they get to twelve? I think Wizards. I mean, have that's 13. the Pistons doubling their win total the rest of the season. <laughs> but part of the Pistons' start <laughs> and, and the the wretched streak was that they were they were really pretty hurt. Their best player is out right now. Here's another thing, though. I think the pressure on other teams has finally been removed, and because of that, the Pistons are going to get a couple more wins. It was we're not going to be the team. It's, to you don't think we're it's not going to be the team anymore, that right. they're going to beat, right? It just it's happening to a few more people now. It's become a little bit less of a big deal mm. to lose to the Pistons. You're not going to teams aren't going to give every give them their you, best every you night see, anymore. Jay, like you see what were. he's doing here. You see what he's doing here. The, yeah. the, oh, yeah. the open I'm door not policy making coach. excuses. No, for the open door the policy right. coach is like, you know what, guys? Teams just aren't. Uh, guys, it's okay. Yeah, it's okay. It's not. It's not bad to lose the Pistons. Anymore. No, but I think that's a solid point. Th- this though, is right? like, this not... is all he's doing. He just just want, wanted to. This is a whole hot take right here. Was just set up to let. The this Thunder is insane off the hook. coming from Zach when it comes to blasted. the Heat. Anytime the Heat what? lose, the Heat lose five games in a row. It's, hey, it's all part of it. It's all part okay. of it. With the Heat, it's, it's, it's proven to be part of it. It's you proven. let me know where the Thunder have been to three of the last four conference finals, okay? You just let me know when that's happened. We'll put that right. in my well, pro- probably, probably in the next three years you can say that. But <laughs> at least right now. Uh, okay, uh, wow. Pistons won't finish last. That is a... That's a hot take. Uh, Jay, what is your hot take? The Cavaliers are as dangerous in the playoffs as anybody but the Celtics in the East. Wow. Okay. I, I'm I'm into this Cavaliers team right now. But th- this Cavaliers ch- team is going to change the uh, way I, they play and, once and they get healthy. Be, right. There will be a lot they need to figure out once they get Moby back, once they get Garland back. But discovering Sam Merrill is huge. That dude yes, is having one of the goodness. best three point shooting seasons in NBA. Josh, history you see what he's right doing now. here? You see what he's doing here? This is. Oh, I know exactly. He what found he's a doing white. Here. He found a white. Yeah. He's... <laughs> Dean Sam Wade. Merrill. Dean Unbelievable Wade. this year. He's having. <laughs> Dean Wade has been fantastic. <laughs> Max, Max Struess when he hasn't got a fresh haircut. Ma- you know, Max Struess just... <laughs> <Max Struce's laughs> has not been at, at his greatest. But, but. Those guys, they have competent wings now. They have a lot of three-point shooting. Their last yeah. 10 games, they're 9-1, and one, and granted, the competition hasn't been great. But they have an 18 net rating. <laughs> but they're also missing two starters. Like, we could say the competition hasn't been that great, but yeah. they're missing two starters. Yeah, Donovan Mitchell is just really spraying the ball around. 
And I want to see what it looks like once Mobley gets back and Mobley and Allen is going to totally change the formula. Like Garland, mm-hmm. I don't know if he really will just because even though you put the ball in his hands, it's just another perimeter guy, another shooter. But the Mobley-Allen thing from right now where they're playing small with a lot of wings, with a lot of shooting is going to change things. But I think if they can figure that out, this team is super dangerous because Mitchell's Mitchell with shooters around him, we've seen time after time in Utah that that is a dangerous, dangerous thing to stop. Mm-hmm. And and they're going to score a lot of points. The, the just I'm just again asking for clarification. You're talking about the same Utah team that you called frauds when they were good, right? That <laughs> Yeah, that remember remember that remember that you called him the you called the six win Hawks yeah you that is frauds? the exact same okay. well the conversation was very different oh, about, about those guys man. than it is about fantastic. about these guys okay the the Cavaliers man they're they're legit right now they I mean they're playing incredible I, I, basketball I, I'm I super love, impressed I love with how the they've way handled they're this stretch the, of of injuries and everything like yeah they I yeah I uh, I still have questions about Donovan Mitchell in the postseason. Um, and by questions, I mean, I don't think he's very good, but I think your uh, Donovan Mitchell postseason takes are a little, little strange. I think he's living off the bubble still like he, I, he's, he's had some really bad clutch moments and shooting moments in the postseason outside of the bubble. It's been pretty bad. Um, the, the last year in Utah was, I mean, that, that also might've been him just saying, you it know, it's definitely him just Let's saying, I don't up. want to be like, here at all. Yeah. I don't want but it. Still. I don't want this. Yeah um okay wow uh man i feel like and, I and bring it. the other part of it i don't really believe in the other teams in the east like like sure. philly, philly doesn't have enough Do, creators to me you know they're really good milwaukee you know milwaukee's going through it i just yeah i don't i don't believe in those other teams well Cleveland. they're going through celebrations right now that adrian griffin's no longer around that is going true. through that. Um, that was crazy. That's the such circle, like that. The little, they that do that every game. Line. Line. No, but there was different There's energy of this vibe one. Behind and it. and I don't. I mean, maybe I'm wrong on this because I don't. I'm not like set up for text alerts when the Bucks official account tweets something. The fuck that the the fact that the, the account put that out there, like yeah. the day the after. Nastiest? The Thanasis bringing out his hand one. They were just dancing on Joe Prunty's grave too. Poor, poor Prunty. Oh poor, no, but he's the he's stop. the in, move over JB Bickerstaff. Like he's the new interim god, right? He, Joe I Prunty. swear to God, he was born an interim head coach. Oh my god, like, yeah, he, he was born. He really was. He was not meant to be a real head coach. No, just just forever interim. Um, okay, my hot take. Ooh. All right. This season currently is the last losing season of Wemby's career. They are going to be an above 500 team last year. <laughs> this this lanky motherfucker pulled out a sham god and this big sweeping layup over Rudy Gobert. That's your defensive player of the year. Everyone said, oh, my. and he did it like it was nothing. He did it like he's messing around against his little brother in the driveway. This guy's so good, and it is insane to me, absolutely insane, that you two jerks are like, I don't know, rookie of the year. Seems kind of up in the air. You've got to be shitting me. You have to act like he is by far the best he's, rookie we've seen. He's mounting by a far. charge. He's mounting a charge. Mounting a charge? You see what he, he does this every damn game he does something ridiculous and it's not just oh he's got a couple of highlights he's killing right now i personally preferred Thanasis's kyle watson move that, that was a better highlight <laughs> that was simply a foul or they call what they call a travel they call it a travel okay it's not a travel it's a carry it's yeah, not it's a travel, but it was a carry but it was not a travel any other player on the bucks does that and oh. it's not called. I my think the ref was profiling that, Thanasis there. It was like, there's my no absolute way you can favorite do part of that is the Bucks were up by how much? They're up almost 30. Oh, right? no, it was... yeah. I mean, he, Thanasis is in the and, game. And Giannis is, Giannis is up out of his seat, livid, arguing with the ref over this call. How any dare other, you call a travel any on other my player brother? Does that we're up, gets called, <laughs> they're up not. 30. Yeah. R- remember when Patrick <laughs> Mahomes, after like Travis Kelsey's 
like lateral and touchdown was like, you're ruining his legacy right now by taking that away, refs. Giannis is on the sideline. You are killing my brother's legacy right now. <laughs> that was such a weird thing to argue about in a fight. It was, it was so funny. Like, that's a good brother right there. Yeah. But I that's love that brother. he's the little brother, too. And that just adds another layer of right. fun. That Giannis um, is the little brother. Back back to Wemby being a god. Uh, this is like I don't understand what anyone else is watching. And Chet's been unbelievable. Don't get me wrong. Chet's been unbelievable. This guy, it, like he he's by far the best player in this class. The... It's not even close. And he was supposed to be. So that that shouldn't be a shock. But I just like I don't know what you guys are watching. And maybe that's what it is. Is there was already just so much hype and there's so much sure. expectation. And, I, and I mean, if you're like, the yeah, bar he, was, he's living the bar up to it, or yeah, the... exactly. That could right. be because, yeah, like the year when, like when I was in OKC and Russ was averaging a triple double. Like, mm -hmm. if he didn't get a triple double, people were like, oh, Russ was off tonight, right? Like, what? <laughs> he hit thirty six <laughs> nine and nine. You're like, is, oh man, what is the bar here? <laughs> At what? Wait, hold on. Let me ask you this question. At what point did you guys realize? And I want a real answer here, okay? I don't want to be like, oh, yeah, it was around February. We thought he might be able to average triple. <laughs> like, at what point were you guys like, oh, shit, he's going to do this? It was pretty late. It was pretty late because it, it was late in October training camp? when they saw him Le steal yeah. rebounds from Steven <laughs> No, man, yeah. like, well, that was a whole different thing. Steve-O is generous. Uh... <laughs> do you think – all right, hold on. I mean, these are unfair questions. And for me, you, it was, it's yeah. why you're on the pod, Josh. Uh, do you think that was a conversation – that Steven had with Russ, Steven had with maybe the coaching staff, the front office, or Steven was oh. just like, you know what? I'm just going to be a Steve, good teammate. It was on his that own. One, that last one. Yeah. That last one. He was just like, ah. Because he, he doesn't, Steven didn't care. He, 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 didn't. he wanted to help Russ out, and he doesn't care about himself in that way where he's like, I got to right. get mine. That's just, he was not concerned about that. So he was, he'll tip it up, tip it up. There were plenty he could. <laughs> Just grab the ball with two hands, and he would just tip it backwards. <laughs> and you know the you know the Thunder scorekeeper is not going to be like, "Ooh, that's a controlled tip." Got to give that one yeah. to, to Stephen. Like that's not going to absolutely not. Okay, what was long. what was your what was your bullshit answer about pretty late in the season? You guys realize what were you going to say? <laughs> well, dude, like you have to understand. Like I'm sitting there going, "There's no way. There's no way, sir." Because what it hadn't been done in almost what fifty years? Fifty, yeah, basically. So it was almost one of those like unbreakable Wilt scoring a hundred, you know what I mean? Like Cal Ripken Jr. games, like one of those unbreakable records that you're like, ah, it's just gonna last forever. And then you're like, well, maybe. Because in my mind, I was always like, "There's no." I do way. love. There's I no way. Love the idea of Josh that. hating from the sideline, just like this. He's not gonna do it. No this, chance. That's my impossible. rebound. Oh, I was going right. to get every rebound. I was fighting for my money. I was like, I mean, <laughs> Russ I, love, I like the idea of like missing shots on purpose. Yeah, yeah. I like the idea of Josh. Josh grabs the rebound <laughs> next to Russ, and Russ is like, "What the fuck?" And you're like, "I need this." <laughs> you, I, I try to get paid. Here. You've got your money. I need this. Um, all right, so that's gonna that's gonna close the hot take safe zone. You cannot attack any of those hot takes. All right, the the Pistons will not finish last. The Cavs are as dangerous as anyone in the East in the postseason, other than Boston. And this is the last year of Wemby's career that he has a losing season. Him versus Chet was so amazing. That was so fun. This, that, that was amazing. that was so fun. I mean, it sucks that, that was it wasn't a, a better game because it was the Spurs. Um, because I think you would have seen that the entire fourth quarter, right? And I love that they're both so competitive that it mattered to them that they were in that matchup. It yeah, they, they're not them. stupid. They they know yeah. what that. What well, that when means. was the last time we had this like rookie competition? Right, you had like the Magic Bird thing, obviously, and it's kind of like position for other position, ones? right? Like like yeah. you know, Melo Lebron. Um, yeah, Melo Lebron. That's a, a good one for a little bit. Wiggins Parker, right? Like, like, yeah, like they tried to make a thing, and Jabari just, but Jabari but, was just hurt, like, he couldn't like and, fulfill that role, right? And this is different because these guys are both playing at such a high level, right? Yeah, both these guys, right? Are like it's not already a, far beyond it's what's it's not a competition like Wiggins versus Jabari, <laughs> like, these guys are both like very freaking good already, clearly yeah, yeah. on an insane trajectory. 
There was and... a little bit of like Cat Okafor, you know, their their rookie seasons. Um, yeah. But even that, like, it didn't, I don't know, it didn't feel like this. Maybe it hasn't been a been... closer at the moment, but it, it didn't yeah. feel like this. I can't think of another one that is the yeah. same level. Yeah, I mean, I guess the, the in terms of same level, the last time we outside had this was, was like Melo LeBron. Yeah. Right? yeah, 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 yeah. For sure. That's that's probably it. Um, all right, hot take safe zone is closed. You cannot attack those three hot takes, or even Jay's addendum to Josh's hot take that the Wizards will finish last. They stink. Off limits. You can attack anything else that those two say. Um, all right, let's go to buy or sell. Buy or sell. I, I mean, it's. I don't have to explain that, right? You're buying what I'm about to say or you're selling it. So pretty simple. Yeah. Jay, you got it? You got the rules? <laughs> Wait, Man, this season? I, well, I, I've, I didn't on know the season, rules right? one time, and this is going to be a joke <laughs> forever. <laughs> All right. Well, I mean, hold on. For the person that <laughs> shits on Josh for his open door policy comment on Mark Bagnell for the first episode he was from ever on, my very you've first been, episode. And, and every time from Mark like Bagnell comes up in the group it, chat, it was you great say open door policy because you asked me, you're like, what makes him such a good coach? Josh, here's the floor. Give right. us your honest. <laughs> and, it, and here's the thing: it was a great answer that we will not stop making fun of. <laughs> yeah, and here we are, almost in February. Yeah, and he's probably going to win Coach of the Year. Yeah, I mean he's got to be the heavy favorite, know. right? They lose to the Pistons. and the Warriors are going to miss the playoffs. Pistons. Well, we don't know about that yet. We'll get into that. Uh, all right, buy or sell? <laughs> Jay, we'll start with you. Doc Rivers is the solution to Milwaukee's problems. No, I I think he'll he'll change things in a good way. He's not Adrian Griffin, who clearly had lost the locker room, who clearly had lost Giannis. But they just don't have enough defense. There are not enough pieces there to be great defensively. And, and you can change your system to better utilize Brooke Lopez and Giannis. You can change your system so that everything is funneled to those guys. And But at the, at the end of the day, in the playoffs, you're going to have to guard Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, Kristaps Porzingis, Drew Holiday, and Derek White. And you're going to be doing it with Malik Beasley, Damian Lillard, and God knows who else. So I'm I'm not sold that this will fix all of their problems. I think their problems went way beyond the head coach. The vision there is becoming like otherworldly offensively and competent mm -hmm. defensively, but I just don't see them finding that solution. Like they just don't have enough wing defenders. I I just I'm not I'm not there yet with them and I don't think I'll get there. Josh by or sell. I just so uh, the hard part for me to to figure out is like what is what creates a a sol solution to the problems, right? What's their where are they sitting at record wise right now? They'd lost what 13 <clears throat> games when Doc yeah. took over. Mm -hmm. Um and now they're sitting at what? Uh 32 and 14. Right. Right? You look at that objectively like with no knowledge of how Whatever the problems are, you go. This is a good team. They're sitting they're what, really second, good. They're they got, they got second Giannis in the James East right now. They're sitting highly second in the East right now. They've only lost fourteen. Like, so what is the? Where's the problem? Right. To me, it was this locker room thing. Right. You got you get hear rumors coming out about Giannis changing plays. You know what I mean? Giannis losing trust in in Adrian Griffin. Like, I think Doc could be. A somewhat of a solution because of the fact that like he is he's doc rivers he is he has coached championship teams he has the proven resume and he's a defensive minded coach i think he's going to earn that respect from these guys that griffin right. didn't have because it's weird right it's like why do we feel like this team is struggling when they're second in the east but also all right so this is interesting from your perspective josh because you are a you are a player in the nba like you like you've experienced all this stuff mm -hmm. All of us on the outside here do not believe in Doc Rivers, right? Like mm -hmm. Doc Rivers get like for his resume, and I'm including that. I'm not absolved. I'm yeah. not pretending I'm not part of that. Like I make as many Doc Rivers jokes about any as as anybody. Like he is not accepted as this guy who can help you win a championship anymore. But why? I mean, like, Be listen, because, he had some great teams they, that did not perform when they should have. Because right? he like, like they blow three one leads, they blow three two leads, they right. like they don't advance. You know, once. 
once the KG Paul Pierce era was mm-hmm. was cut, you know, or or was done. Yeah. Like he he hasn't come close think, to competing for a championship since. I think when you look at f- his time in Philly, that was I feel like a, a more of a personnel issue in terms sure. of like, Embiid wasn't Embiid yet. He had James Harden, right? Uh, ben Simmons. Like he was dealing with other potential issues of maturity, competitiveness, whatever you want to call it, things like that. Right. I think you don't have to worry about that with this Bucks roster the same way. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I just, I think Doc will command a little bit more respect and get these guys to hop on board a little bit better than they did with, with Adrian Griffin. Cause as a player, and even you don't even need a player to understand, to be a player, to understand that, like if your players, if, especially if your star player just does not respect the coach that seeps into everything, it seeps My- into the locker room, it, it becomes toxic and people just don't buy in. My issue with the hiring is not even with the hiring itself because at this stage of the season, they needed to go out and hire somebody with a pedigree. They could not have hired just another first-time mm-hmm. head coach who was learning on the fly who had to come in and, and fix things. I don't think that would have worked. So Doc Rivers, there weren't really a lot of other choices given that criteria. Right. My issue is, like, you look back at Mike Budenholzer and – he was an amazing regular season coach who won a championship, much like Doc Rivers did, and had other circumstances where he probably didn't adjust enough, where he wasn't up to the challenge against a great, great head coach like Eric Spolstra. Like, and that was his problem. That's Doc Rivers' problem, too. So you had a guy in Mike Boonholzer who might be a better coach, and, and then you end up with Doc Rivers. So it's just like the the steps that they've taken as an organization have just led them to what I consider a downgrade. And I get why they needed to move on from Budenholzer, but, but to me, like you've downgraded from your head coach and you've done it. And now doc has to come in mid season and Mm. fix a locker room that is reeling from a weird Adrian Griffin experience where they want a ton. Are they reeling? They looked pretty happy. Well, they're happy happy now, now, but but there are just like there are issues from that. Yeah, I don't know. I, I get I, that. Just, yeah, yeah. It'll be interesting. It's hard to predict. If Giannis hop, if Giannis jumps on board, I think that goes a long way. But he, yeah, I I agree. But even to Jay, you know, to Jay's point, like, can they fix this deal? Like, all right, let's we're going to drop coverage a hundred percent of the time. But okay, great. You're now you're still getting torched. And Boonholzer like, was every, the best every, at that. By the every, way, every, Boonholzer was amazing at creating a structured defense. But, for the regular season, sure. In the playoffs, like it didn't hold up time and time again. Like it held up one time, one time. And granted, it held up for a championship. So congrats. But like we kept talking about the same thing of like, wow, they don't adjust. Wow, they just get shredded from three. Wow. Like any team shooting decently is going to give them trouble. And so I even think like, you know, everyone, everyone latched on to the the Giannis rant in the part where he was talking about we need a plan, we need a system, we need a plan, we need a system, right? Like once Griffin got fired, the thing that kept ringing in my head is him saying we can't die on screens in the exact same rant. He's like we can't, we die on screens all the time, myself included, blah blah blah. And it's like to me, that's talking about Dame, right? Like because like Dame doesn't navigate screens well, like he just doesn't. I don't think it's a lack of effort. I think he just doesn't have that for whatever reason at this point, and. Like I, you know, Malik Beasley is a little bit better at it, but not great. Like they don't have the personnel to compete on the perimeter. Like Chris Middleton doesn't move like he used to. And so unless, you know, unless you can fix some of that and maybe you can schematically, maybe I'm, I mean, I'm willing to be completely in the dark on that. I don't know what doc's going to try to do, but also Josh, like how much can you, can, can you implement throughout a regular season? Like halfway through the regular season, they don't practice. <clears throat> And Doc's, Doc's teams yeah. already don't practice. You know, like there's just only so much you can do. Yeah. Be interesting. I have no and idea. We, Josh we'll thinks see, he sucks. Yeah. That's what, we, we have uh, all these questions, and they are 32 and 14, you know? Oh, yeah. they're, that's the thing. Yeah. They're, they're, good. they're kind of, so good. They're, they're so good. They've survived all of this stuff. And maybe, maybe it is a coaching change. Like clearly, sure. they needed a change. It, they made it so quickly, abruptly. They knew things were very wrong. 
I ju- yeah. I'm just not sure it's going to push them over the top. Um. All right. We'll Next topic: buy or sell, Josh. The Clippers are the biggest threat to Denver in the Western Conference. Just to let you know, they are 27 and seven since they moved Russ to the second unit. I'm gonna buy. I'm gonna buy this. I wow. think. I think this roster is the only one. I guess I just closed this door to you, Mark Dignop. This is the only team offensively and defensively and has the size hmm. to be able to battle with Denver. Right. I think OKC has the offensive firepower for yeah, sure. For sure. They, I don't know if they have the defensive ability when you look at Ch- can Chet handle Jokic nope. for, for a seven game series, right? Like, for a like series. I like I, I know they played them well this year, but I feel like it gets to the playoffs and Jokic should be like, okay, I'm going to post you up every exactly. time, skinny guy, and let's see if you can not foul me. Exactly. You look at the Clippers, I think not only do they, can they keep up offensively, but they have the defensive um, ability to be able to do it in a series more than anybody else. Mm. And I don't Jay, see anybody else. Son. like Yeah. And they're so big and long on the wing. Yeah. They're, they're so physical. Like th- that's a great, great defensive team. It's a great, great two way team. Kawhi is playing at an insane level right now. the The Clippers have played as good basketball during this stretch as anybody. Yeah, they're they're. I mean, they're what they did to the Celtics the other night was more impressive Ooh. than any team has done to the Celtics. Yeah, that was, and it was on the second leg of a back to back for LA. They just totally took the Celtics out of what they wanted to do. Just totally, and then Kawhi took over at both ends. So yeah, I'm 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 in on the Clippers. I am very in on the Clippers. This is a definite buy to me. They are absolutely Denver's top competition in the West. When when uh, when Dave sent the uh, the rundown before I got down to this section, and and I just saw hot take safe zone at the top. My my thought was, oh, Clippers will win the West. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, and then read read down. To, uh, is that, to, I don't know if that's hot enough. The Clippers winning the West. I don't is think it's hot enough. enough either. Yeah. I don't think it's, it's that it's, hot. It's like saying the Lions are going to go to the Super Bowl, right? Oh, like just don't do that. Just don't no. do that. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me let me go reminisce about all those NBA Finals moments for the Clippers and all Maybe that. At least success. one playoff game in the last three decades. Hey, so have the Lions now, you know. <laughs> No, but like the Clippers historically, like we can't pretend that we weren't all like, hey, the Clippers got a clipper, right? Like we've all been doing this. Yeah, but we can't come, like this is a new situation. I don't think we can just sit here and pretend that this is like any other year. Because they brought in the guy who definitely doesn't flame out in all these big games in the playoffs. Uh, the the other piece of this is that they're just healthier now. I like I said, that's the case. It's always they, about they beat Kawhi the Celtics Celtics, the other right? night, and it was on the second leg of a back to back. And Kawhi and Paul George both played, and they were both awesome. Yeah, because Kawhi is that good. Like when so, Kawhi is healthy, I personally think only Jokic is better. I think he's the second best player in the league when Kawhi is healthy. Like he's he's that good. He's yeah. dominant on both ends. Like there's nothing you can do to take him out of his game. You just have to hope and pray. Like he's that. You Dom. put him above him uh, above Embiid as the, Embiid as a player, healthy. for sure. Yeah, because I've because I've look I broken record here, but like <laughs> Embiid's had two good playoff series, like in yeah. his career. One was against the Wizards. One was against the Hawks. They lost the Hawks one. Like I just like, you know, Embiid is a phenomenal regular season player, but we all have to be like do it in the playoffs. Shaq was Shaq essentially said that on a podcast recently, where he's like, "Look, Kareem challenged me." Like I'm challenging Embiid. Like it's just what you have to do, and mm-hmm. and like we, you know, we did it with Jokic for the most part, and then look what happened. Like yeah, bullying, bullying and shaming works. No, that's not a fun <laughs> thing to say. You're that kids. Twenty twenty four. Always bully. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, I do think like that's the tricky part. Is just do you believe the Clippers will be healthy? Because because if they're healthy, it seems like they it seems pretty damn good, right? Yeah. It's just believing in them to be healthy is is the tricky part of that. Uh, all right, buy or take, or not buy or take, buy, buy or, or sell. Take. <laughs> buy this take. Joel Embiid plays sixty five games this season and is eligible for the MVP award. 
Sell, sell all the way. Sell. No chip. Yeah, no. no. He can do what? He only missed six more games all year. I think so. Yeah, yeah. And they've got how many? About four. Where are they? At? About four. They're like thirty-seven, games 30, thirty-eight games, something like that. Yeah, I yeah. Remember. Not a chance. No. If, if he hadn't won the MVP already, I think he'd probably be gung ho about getting to that level and making sure he played all those games. They have to manage him. It's mm-hmm. far more well, important put, yeah. to get to the playoffs right. healthy yeah. and be right. Exactly. And there, exactly. there's well, no need to them pulling him after warmups before the Denver game. To me, proves that. What is on... this thing about him not playing in Denver? Against, it's I know. Weird Trust now, me. man. It's like, weird. A couple a couple what years ago, I was like his career. Two what is that? How many games? Has, how many games? Denver? Did he play? Has he played in December since 2019? I saw some crazy stat. Oh, oh how really many noticed. games he has missed? I'm gonna have to find it. But he is. You think? You think it's just because he, it's not a health thing? December. It's it's not a health thing. It's just like he loves the holidays that much. I don't know. I it's weird, but I think I do think that like when you're thinking in terms of Embiid's legacy, Jimmy to go like he's got the MVP. He's got the MVP already. Yeah. What's next? A title, <laughs> and also. There's actually something kind of like genius to this where part of me thinks because Embiid is such an elite troll that he would do this purposefully of like <laughs> he's going to play 64 games and score more points than than minutes played and be like so clearly the best scorer and this dominant force and everything and we're going to have to go sorry you didn't get to 65 you're not eligible like isn't it such a like kind of brilliant slap in the face of what this rule is in a way. Mm-hmm. Like, yes, it, it would cost him the MVP because I do think if you guarantee he hits 65 games, I think he's winning that vote, right? As good as Shea's been, like, I just think people would be like, well, look yeah. at the scoring, look at the dominance, you know? Um, but I, I think, like, it's kind of a genius thing where, all right, year one of this rule and Embiid's going to have this season and not get the required number of games, like, it's kind of a great troll. <laughs> if he's trolling, that's hilarious. The, it, uh, but this, this guy's always like chess checkers, right? When it comes to trolling, he you wants. Think he's trolling the, Adam Silver. It's a weird wants, one to take a stand Shea on. Gilgis, to want to decide to do. So you're saying he wants Shea Gilgis to be like MVP with an asterisk? Because everyone will be. Because everyone's going to come out and say, "Yeah, but Embiid." did this in 64 games or whatever that number ends up being like, it's always going to be, yes, this guy, like whether Jokic wins it or Shea or whatever, Tatum, like it's going to be, yeah, this guy won, but Embiid wasn't eligible and look at the season he had. It's, it's kind of like a legendary thing to do, right? It's the, it's the movie 10 cup. <laughs> it's a movie 10 cup. Yeah. He got a 12 on the final hole, but no one's going to remember who won the U S open that year. Everyone's going to remember his 12. They'll remember you 12. Yeah, exactly. God, I love that movie. I'm going to watch it today. Oh, great what a great movie. movie. Great fucking movie. Great movie. It was um, also, they also went to great lengths to protect Embiid from being oh, I thought the we're talking 10 couples said, No, I'm talking about the 76ers now. Like, oh, the, the training staff was just watching him and decided he couldn't do it. He couldn't play. It's like, he wasn't even on the injury report. Why is the training staff just watching him warm up? Right. It was clearly his his decision, or at least he complained of some soreness. At some what point. was the yeah? What was the it was knee or what was the? I think it, it was knee. Matter. Yeah, knee probably yeah. wasn't real. Like it doesn't matter. <laughs> what was the excuse? It's it's I, kind of crazy. When is five he going to play in Denver? Denver played in five years. When's he going to play in Denver again? What is that? Never. That's crazy. That's crazy because it's not like but he did. He did whip Jokic's ass. Like two that's weeks. the thing at home. He does this, right? At home, like, he plays really well against Jokic. It's not – it can't be like, I'm afraid of going against Jokic. No. He plays him really well. Is he just – does he play in Utah? Do we know this? Like, is No, it, he doesn't. Is it, uh, is least, it an elevation? Someone, it's an elevation yeah. thing. Someone tweeted at me that he never plays in Utah. I think he's only played, like, three times in his career in Utah. All right, maybe it's just an elevation thing. I don't know. Maybe it's that weird. makes his knee swell up. Who knows? His knees, he warmed up and his knee swelled up. Apparently, who knows? That's what I'm saying. I don't know. Yeah, I'm I'm checking this right now. All right, final buy or sell. We will throw this to Josh first as uh, Jay does some research. He has played three Luke, times in, in Utah in his career. 
Wow. And he started playing when in 2016? 2016, yeah. 2017 season, right? But, but he played the first few years. Yeah. yeah. No, you're right. Yeah. But he did play there last year in Utah. Oh, maybe it was maybe it was like a like a test. Maybe how did he play? Bear. He was Gosh. ducking Gobert. Oh, maybe that's what. How did he play? He what were, what were the numbers? Play? I don't know. You just had the numbers. What, what did he do in Utah last year? Uh, let me check. He had <laughs> thirty point seven rebounds oh. in Utah last year. Thirty and seven against Walker Kessler. So maybe he was he just a plus two. And I don't know if they won or not. Doesn't say How that. Do you not know that. It doesn't say it. it the... What are you on? Stat news. Stat news. <laughs> Lord. All right. Um. Last one. We have had a lot of seventy-point games recently. We had two of them in the last week. That's, that is a lot. That is That's a, a lot, lot, man. A lot. Like we had that two. We had two within two months of each other last year. Also, yeah. same night, we've had two players go for sixty-two. If you drop and lose. It to... If you drop it to sixty, yeah, what we had four sixty. Oh, I saw. Plus yeah, games I saw the. And... I saw the the stat was like um, from nineteen eighty four to two thousand and three or two thousand and four. There were eight sixty point games, and we've had nine in like the last thirteen months or something like that. That's cr- <laughs> that's nuts. Um, I look. I'm not taking a shot at this guy because I do very much respect him. I think he does a great job. Talking about Buckle the up, Jay. <clears throat> JJ Reddick had something on his podcast recently where he was trying Uh-oh. to say that it's bullshit to say like the league is set up for offensive players, right? Because they made all these defensive ch- defensive rule changes. I think it, Derek White was his guest at the time, and he's and he's trying to say like, hey, l- you can't just say this because look at all the rule changes. Except the problem w- is, literally the next night after this clip like kind of goes viral. The next night, four of the six rule changes he cited, I saw in games being completely ignored. Like, because they do make these emphasis, right, and these rule changes, but they don't enforce them after, like, a month into the season. Like, the whole, like, jumping back into a defender, net, like, you yeah. can do that now. Trey Young does it all the time yeah. still. Like, you, you can absolutely do that. Dame Lillard does it. Like, they all do it. And so, since, since that video, we've had four 60-point games. We've had two 70 point games and Lucas 73 the other night was incredibly compelling, incredibly compelling. Does it against the Hawks? Does it against Trey young? You know, 73, like, I don't care how you slice like 73 is a ridiculous amount of points, but is that, is it as impressive with what, like, like we put up against Kobe's 81, right? I think we're all taking Kobe's 81, right? Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. 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 Yep, Kobe's eighty one was Kobe's eighty one was ridiculous. It was but in the a different way that, era. A different era. It, it, way very different, different era. era. Yeah, how way many possessions was it? It was like Yeah, so I looked that up and the league leader in two thousand six was averaging ninety five possessions a game. Which That's would put so them small. at dead last. Dead this last. Year. Yeah. Dead last by like three possessions a game this year. That's, and like, that's when it's not even close. I think league leaders are like 110 now, 110 possessions a game. You put Kobe right into that, there. just adjust it for inflation. He yeah. might have had 100. Right, he might have. It's just um, <laughs> bucket inflation. Yeah, but here, all right. So here's the here's the thing that I hated that that <laughs> night is immediately it's backlash. Score it's too easy. I yeah, we can't even enjoy. We can't even enjoy. No, no, no. and so, like, look, man. I saw people saying like I'm judging you if you like if you like this and everything. I'm like, okay, judge away, I went buddy. back like, and I watched. Him. I went back and watched Kobe's 81. Like I went mm-hmm. back and watched today this morning the 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 highlights like all his buckets. The defense was not that much better. No. I mean that Raptors team was Like crazy. it was not like he if I'm being like the threes that Luka was hitting, some of the shots Luka was hitting were much more difficult. Than the shots mm-hmm. Kobe was hitting. Kobe got a lot of open shots. He blew by defenders, got dunks, wide open layups. Like it's not like it was just this. Like, hey, in 06, we we played defense. We made you work for it. Like, no, like it was not. It was not that much better. 
Right. I, I don't think the defenses are worse now. It's just it's a no. lot harder to play defense. Yes. yes. Yeah. But Be- also because players are just flat out better scorers. Yeah. And if, if you're on the court now, you have to be either a lob threat or a shooter. And if you're not, you're not out there. And that right. makes it so much harder to double team. You can't. It's so hard to double team Luca because he's going to pick you apart. He's going to find an open three point shooter every time. And and they ended up double teaming him sometimes like seventy five feet away from the basket. It was so hilarious the extent to which they did it in the fourth quarter. To- what? All right, I have a problem with the coaching in these games. Obviously, I don't think Pop cared. I, I think Pop against and B was just like, I don't know, man. Let's see if you can beat the single coverage all night. <laughs> like, I, like they didn't. I don't know if they They're, did double the, it once. The, I will say the Hawks, the Hawks help defense and like. Doubling was it was so bad. But but why did it, it take so why did it take sixty from Luca for them to start doing this? I will say so. There's a there's a thought process that like when you go like if we can get this guy to try to go for sixty, we'll probably Wait, win. What cat? Ha- what happened with cat? Right? Yeah, you will probably win. But like Luca had an absurd shooting night. That's one of those nights where you just go like ah oh, shit. Like he was just feeling it tonight. Because more often than not, if you try to like tempt a guy into doing. Stuff like the that, taking heat hit. tech shots. Like he was taking, like some of those threes he took. Oh, ridiculous. like you're you, these bad shots. Flat the out three he had early shot. in the fourth. They just went in. Insane. They just went in. And so, like insane. as a defense, you go like, "What are you going to do, man? Let's see if yeah. he can keep doing it. Odds are he's going to shoot him out of the game." And he just didn't that night because they just kept going in. Right, but they but at a certain point they were like, "All right, trap him at 40. But to, you know, yeah, so at 40 yeah. feet, like, like, why did that take? Like, I, I, I understand what you're no, saying. No, I, I know I what you mean because I think point. at a certain point it sunk in where they were like, "That's <laughs> like, <laughs> no, we're good. <laughs> like, we're good. We're good. <laughs> history here." <laughs> at that, at a certain point, you're going like, you're like, yeah. okay, he has 50. You're like, okay, nobody's yeah. going to remember that he also, has 50. It, right? Yeah. Then and it's then like he, he 60, might have 70. It's like 64, and you're like, all right, crap. <laughs> also, they're the Hawks. If you trap. If you trap, you either have Trey Young on the ball and he's probably oh, making bad. no difference at all, or you have Trey Young in rotation behind the ball, and then you're in real trouble anyway. So either way, if you call yeah, the double team, those... it can put you in serious it trouble. It wasn't even a right. double team. He got out of these double teams so easily to the fact where he would get doubled and then get a wide open layup out of it. Right. Which <laughs> is <laughs> insane. <laughs> There are many times he's got two or three guys digging at him and putting pressure on him, and it ends with him with a point blank wide open leg. What What do you think the line is? What do we have to get to for the league to decide, you know what, we need some hand checking to be allowed? Never. It's done, right? Like, we're never going back that way? No. The genie's out of the bottle. But I would the, love but for it to be back. Skill, skill development an application now is so advanced, right? Well, imagine Kawhi if he could just grab you with his big old hand. Oh my like, god, just, yeah, you would just nothing. grab you. I mean, it's like it would be it would literally be like when Jordan was defended, right? Like there's nothing you can yeah. he's just going to move you wherever he wants to. There's no you can't go back anymore because it's an unfortunate but understandable position where the NBA is it, in is like what what sells tickets? Sure. Yeah, and I'm a not, guy. Not, a guy. A guy having a great defensive game and holding, and holding Luca to to nineteen what, points, or Luca having seventy three. What do you think the conversation is if once LeBron's retired, they allow hand checking? <laughs> what do you think that conversation becomes? Because I actually think that'd be very funny. It would be because it'd be funny. this idea. Because immediately, like all the dumb takes would be. Like, oh, see, like if hand check see, was like, like, like LeBron's not 6'8", 240, right? Like, just, like he's not stronger say, than everybody. To like when I first started LeBron, like I put my hand on his waist and yeah. like usually my hands are big enough that I can like wrap my fingers around there. But like with him, it was like my hand was not big enough to get all the way around his waist and control him. Like how he's not people he? want to like how like how strong like you you're you're trying to move him you're trying to prevent him. It's not going to happen. I mean, the guy is six nine two. You said two forty, but he was two forty when he came out of high school. Right. Yeah. No, he's probably like two sixty five. He's two sixty five. Yeah. Of and yeah, six percent five six percent body fat. 
What are you? You're two, two you're six, six, seven, I'm, two. I'm six, seven, like 230, 235. So he's got me by 30, 40 pounds of muscle. Like of muscle. Of muscle. And he, he was, he was a little more athletic too. Yeah. Let's not be mean. I said a little, a little more athletic. <laughs> Jay's, Jay's, but, like, you know, and, and Jay's like, and look at you guys' bank accounts. Like, it's just. <laughs> <laughs> His wife's not as pretty as yours, though, Jay. That's true. Yeah, you. Yeah, you got the best. <laughs> All right. So is has scoring gone too far? Far Fire, Buy or sell? No. Sco- scoring's gone too far. Sell. Sell? Jay? He wants to buy. He wants to buy so badly. I, I don't want to say it's gone too far. And I don't care either way. <laughs> Do it, you coward. Do it, you coward. Wow, I've never seen someone so scared to say something. It's, Do I have to open up far. the hot it's take zone for you? It's gone too far. When, <laughs> when Carl Towns gets 60 and gets benched in crunch time, it's gone too far. It's gone too far. That's Carl gonna Towns do it six, for this episode of basketball. He got six, and oh. his coach ranted about him afterward. He got benched. But that's what I'm saying. That's exactly what I was talking about. Though, is the like other team the looked at it and time. said, "Keep doing it. Keep doing it. Please keep doing this." And his coach was like, "I got to get him out of the game, or he's going to lose this game." Most performance I've ever seen. <laughs> Imagine you have that game and you walk off the court. You're like, "There's no chance my coach is pissed at me. I had 60. Yeah. Yeah, I had six. And then he spends the entire press conference just, <laughs> just shitting on you. And Ant and Ant afterwards, like, you know, but congrats to Cat. Ooh. Career night. Happy to be a part of it. That is just mm. rough. Uh, that's gonna do it. Make sure you're watching us talk on YouTube. Make sure you're subscribed to the bounce. Make sure you are subscribed to the athletic. Leave nice reviews or comments or make fun of Jay. We don't care. Whatever you want to do. Uh, for Josh Hustis, for Jay King, for Dave DeFore, I'm Zach Harper. Keep it locked on the Athletic NBA Show podcast.